Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at Gen Pi 64. This is a 64-bit version of Gen 2 running on the Raspberry Pi 4. This also works on the Raspberry Pi 3 and 3B+, but I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi 4 8GB model here. In this video, I'm going to give you a little bit of a walkthrough, and then we're going to go over installing this. I mean, it's super easy to do, but I still wanted to run through it because every time I make a video, I have a few people asking. This is by Sakaki over on GitHub, and they have done an amazing job setting this up for the Raspberry Pi 4. Tons of great 64-bit applications are ready to go. They're installed. You can launch them right here from the Applications menu. And basically, everything you need in a desktop operating system is already here, ready to go, but you can always install more if you need to. Link to the GitHub for GenPy will be in the description, and I do want to mention that the documentation here is second to none. I mean, they have done such a great job putting this all together, and if you run into any issues, I definitely recommend reading through this. You can always use the search function or the find function. Three little dots. Find. Type in what you need, like let's say password. The default user is demo user. The default password is Raspberry Pi 64. Same for the root. We have root user, Raspberry Pi 64. So yeah, I mean, if you need to know anything at all, definitely check out the GitHub. This is put together very well, and I've seen some bigger name operating systems for the Raspberry Pi that don't have documentation like this. So this is a big plus if you want to run this. Okay, so the first thing I want to give you a look at is the Raspberry Pi configuration. If we go to settings, we'll see here, our Pi config tool. This will pop up when you first boot this up. As soon as you install it, you'll get a screen that looks like this. We can set up our display, second display, Interfaces, if you want to disable Wi-Fi or the camera, you can do it from here. Set our region on our Wi-Fi. And we also have Pi 4 tuning. It allows us to easily overclock. So I'm on the Raspberry Pi 4, and I'm set to the Extreme Profile. You can always go in and overclock with the config.txt. But 2 GHz on the CPU and 600 MHz on the GPU is really nice for this operating system. In the past, when running Gen 2 on non-x86 CPUs, it's been a pain to update. But Sakaki has set this up to automatically run Gen Up once a week. So it will automatically update. You don't have to do anything at all. As long as your Raspberry Pi is running and it's been a week, it'll run an automatic update for you. So you do not have to manually update Gen 2 on the Raspberry Pi. And I think that's a big plus when running an operating system like this. This is a true 64-bit operating system for the Raspberry Pi 4. I would recommend running this on a Raspberry Pi 4 4 gigabyte model, or you can go with the 8, which I have here. And as you can see, if we have HTOP running, memory, 7.6 gigs, and there's one gig of swap set up. So even if you're running on a 4, you'll have that extra swap if it ever comes to needing it. Along with the operating system itself being 64-bit, there are some 64-bit applications pre-installed here. So we have LibreOffice, the full suite. We also have a few different browsers installed. We have Aurora and Chromium. Personally, I would recommend using Chromium here. Aurora is pretty good, but Chromium has it beat right now. There's just a lot of development behind that and the Raspberry Pi 4. So actually, I already have that opened up. We'll just head over here and I'll go to the Raspberry Pi website. It's actually really quick. I'm over Ethernet and I do have that overclock going. I do have to say it does have a leg up on the Raspberry Pi OS in terms of speed with browsing and things like that. We'll go to WebGL, check out a sample. Even though we don't have proper WebGL here, if I go to, let's say, 100 fish. Sixteen, sometimes it does jump up to twenty. I mean, not perfect, but for a Pi, I mean, it's pretty decent here. Now let's head over to YouTube. Just get this little demo video going here. We're at 720p. Overall, performance with YouTube video playback is pretty much on par with Raspberry Pi OS, so we don't really have any advantages there. If you do want to watch in 720p, it works great. 1080, you're going to have a lot of drop frames. Overall, performance has been really solid with Gen Pi on the Raspberry Pi 4. Lots of great applications, and this is really good for people who are just starting out. A lot of people just want an operating system with everything ready to go. 
Under multimedia, we have VLC. We have the Raspberry Pi video player with a hardware codex. And we also have Kodi built in. GIMP. Under education, like I said, we have the full Libra suite. Some development here. QT5 designer and a sandbox. Accessories. All your basics here. I think it's an awesome operating system for the Raspberry Pi. And I definitely want to show you guys how to install it. So... We're going to move over to my Windows 10 PC. We're going to flash this to an SD card. Keep in mind, you can use a Mac, Linux, or a Windows machine to do this. We're just going to be flashing it to the SD, and then we'll come right back to the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so let's go ahead and get Gentoo installed on our SD card for a Raspberry Pi 4. This is really simple to do. Basically, we're going to head over to the link in the description. Like I mentioned, he has set up an update system, so every week it will update, and it starts two weeks after your initial startup on your Raspberry Pi 4. It's a very involved process to do it yourself, but he has it automatically set up, so it will update for you every week, just to give you all the newest features and everything like that. So from the GitHub link, we're going to go to Releases. You can scroll down, and we'll find GenPy64. We're going to go ahead and download this. It's 1.7 gigs. And while this is downloading, we're going to go ahead and grab Etcher. This works for Mac, Windows, or Linux. I'm going to grab the portable version. And as soon as my Gen 2 image is finished downloading in Etcher, I'm going to place them on my desktop for easy access. Okay, so I have the GenPy64 image downloaded, and I have Etcher. We're going to go ahead and start Etcher. I've already placed my micro SD card in my PC. I'm using a cheaper USB 3.0 micro SD card reader. So it should show up right here in the middle. First thing we need to do is flash from file. We're going to navigate to where we have it downloaded, which is on my desktop, genpy64.image.xz. Make sure you have your SD card chosen. I'm using a 32 gigabyte card. Click continue and flash. We're going to go ahead and let this finish up. It could take a little while because once this is extracted in its image format, it's 13 gigabytes. So to flash to your micro SD card, it could take a little while. Okay, so when the flash is finished, we're actually ready to move back over to the Raspberry Pi. We're just going to take the SD card out of our PC, place it in the SD card slot in the Raspberry Pi, make sure we have our HDMI, power, and keyboard plugged in. So the very first boot is going to take about one minute. At least that's what it did for me. I'm on a Pi 4 non-overclock. This is the 8 gigabyte model, and I'm using a PNY 32 gigabyte SD card. It's not the fastest in the world, but it has to go through the motions. It's going to resize the file system, get everything ready to go, and then it'll bring you right to the desktop with the Raspberry Pi configuration. It only has to do this one time, and every other time you boot up, it's going to be much faster. Upon first boot, it's going to bring you to the Raspberry Pi configuration. From here, I mean, it's very self-explanatory. We have the display. I'm set at 1080p. I'm going to leave everything like it sits. If you have a second display connected to the extra HDMI port on the Raspberry Pi 4, you can set that up from here. From interfaces, we have SPI, Bluetooth, audio, camera. I'm just going to leave everything here enabled. If you're using Wi-Fi, you need to set your region. So I'm in the U.S., you can also press U on your keyboard to get to that section. And we'll find United States. I'm on Ethernet, but either way, I'm going to set it here. And we also have Pi 4 tuning, which I showed you earlier. I'm going to go with Extreme here, and, and that's going to set me to 2 GHz on the CPU and 600 MHz on the GPU. If you just want to set it up in the config.txt and go a little bit higher, you can leave it here and nothing will be overwritten. I'm going to leave it at Extreme. And uh, basically, I'm going to save and exit. It's going to ask us to reboot because I have an overclock. I would click yes to enable that overclock. But for now, I'm going to click no. And that's it. We're now running Gen 2 64-bit on our Raspberry Pi. Up here, we have applications, accessories, development, education, graphics, internet. We're going to be using Chromium here. Multimedia. We have Kodi built in. We also have VLC player. Office, we have the full LibreOffice 64-bit built into this. Other, system. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of great stuff here. And like I mentioned, I'm on the Raspberry Pi 4 8 gigabyte model. As you can see here, it is registering with that 7.6 gigs of RAM. Overall, very nice operating system for the Raspberry Pi. Overall, this has been a... Overall, this has been a very snappy operating system for the Raspberry Pi 4, especially with an overclock.
Right now, I'm not overclocked. I'm sitting at 1.5 gigahertz on the CPU and I don't have any GPU overclock because I didn't do a reboot, but I definitely recommend overclocking. And like I mentioned, the GenPy documentation is super solid, so if you do run into an issue, the answer is probably over here. You use the search function and you can find out what you need. One of the main things you will need is the password. The default user is demo user. Password is Raspberry Pi 64. Root user, Raspberry Pi 64. So if you've been searching for something a little bit different to run on your Raspberry Pi, I definitely recommend GenPy. This is a great little operating system, and I can't wait to see where it goes. I know newer drivers will be available for the Raspberry Pi's hardware, and they should be implemented with GenPy. But that's it for this one. Really appreciate you watching. Links for everything I mentioned in this video are in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.